Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. If you missed last week's episode with Brandon Cretu and Patricia Fernandez, shame on you. However, you can go back and watch it again at nextmotochampion.com. Do it now. First call to order tonight, a big fat congratulations to Josh Hayes on his perfect weekend. Mr. Perfect, as they called him, raced to his 50th career superbike win. And after not one, but two dominating races for the number one plate, Josh Hayes racked up his 51st by the end of the race weekend. Congrats, Josh Hayes. Also, congrats to the rider out of Mexico City, Richie Escalante, winner of the Bazaz Superstock 600 race by almost four seconds over Travis Wyman. Richie not only won his first ever American National Road Race, but it's believed that he's the first rider from Mexico to win a U.S. National ever. Congrats to him, and while we're at it, to all the race winners from the weekend. And now, let's check out some race footage from this weekend at VIR, provided by Moto America. Round three of the Moto America Championship was held at the majestic VIR Virginia International Raceway. And it was Josh Hayes, the four-time champion, who led them down to turn one, chased hard by Roger Hayden, who slotted in to second place on the Yoshimura Suzuki. His teammate, Jake Lewis, going wide at turn one. Cameron Bobier slotted into third place, leading the Superstock Championship, Jake Gagne, in number 32 machine. Gagne would be under pressure, though, soon. Bobier would go in pursuit of Hayden. Meanwhile, out front, Josh Hayes, whose record at VIR is superb, and he loves this track that was 30 points adrift at the start of the weekend. Knew he had to win two races to try and close the gap on his teammate, Bobier. Roger Hayden holding off Bobier for now as they came across the line again. And as they came into turn one, Bobier made a rare mistake. The championship leader by 30 points going wide at turn one and allowing Hayden to get away. Luckily, he survived this one. But worse was to befall Tommy Leong, who got it wrong on the long straight, very fast off that. Likewise, Jake Gagne just hit a crack in the pavement on the uphill section, and down went the number 32 Road Race Factory rider. Quickly followed by the Yamalu Westby Racing double zero of Josh Day. Out came the red flag and a restart. Hayes would have to do it all again. He got the start, Hayden would quickly go in pursuit. Better start from Jake Lewis this time, and amazingly, the Road Factory boys got the number 32 back out on track and again, Gagné went in pursuit of leading the Superstock Championship. Just in front of him, a welcome return to the series for Danny Eslick, the Daytona 200 winner, who would battle with the likes of this man, the Geico Suzuki of Chris Ulrich, as they battle for a top six in Superbike. Meanwhile, out front, it was plain sailing for the four-time champion who won the last AMA race held here. Bobier, though, up the inside to go into second place ahead of the Yoshimura Suzuki of Roger Hayden. But out went the Road Factory man again, Jake Gagne, while leading the Super Stock. Clutch problems this time, but no such problems for this man as the Monster Energy Grace Yamaha of Josh Hayes wins his 50th American Superbike race. And the battle for fourth place intensified all the way to the line. Danny Eslick holding off Taylor Knapp, but Knapp would win in Super Stock. Eslick taking four. I don't think we've had a race quite that consistent in a while as far as lap times go. So I'm having a lot of fun riding the motorcycle. I still don't feel 100%, but when I'm on the bike, I feel a lot better than I do in here, and uh, things are going well on the machine. Battered and bruised from a crash on Friday, Josh Hayes bounces back to taste the champagne once again for the 50th time on Sunday. And an emotional Taylor Knapp gets his first professional win for TOBC Racing. Uh, we've been struggling actually uh, this weekend with, uh, you know, we haven't had a lot of dry time with the bike, so we thought we were sitting really good and uh, we struggled in qualifying, struggled in practice, gambled, tried some things in the race, and uh, we kind of, we, we got lucky and we hit it. Temperatures rose again for the start of race two and everyone was in hot pursuit again of Josh Hayes who got away from the start. Now Rambobier trying to go around the outside, Jake Lewis. Hayes then with the lead, followed by Hayden. Then Cameron Bobier third, Jake Gagne in fourth position, and Jake Lewis slotting into fifth. Opening lap, and already Josh Hayes was pulling away at the front. He was in determined mood. The king of American superbikes at this majestic setting was on fine form. By the midway point of the race, the Monster Energy Grace Yamaha had increased his lead and was now passing back markers. Hot and humid. Very physical, the VIR track is sapping. Cameron Bobier was trying to get on level terms with Roger Hayden, 
But the Yoshimura Suzuki man was determined to take second place, having had several thirds already. Hayes increases his lead. By the end of the race, it would be over 13 seconds. Battle for second continued. Both the ages couldn't stop Hayden. It seems ironic that five years ago to the day, Hayes won race two and Tommy Hayden won race one. But it was all Hayes this time. Jake Gagné would hold off Jake Lewis and take the Superstock win, his fourth for the Road Race Factory team. But it was the perfect weekend for the number one, Josh Hayes. Man, it's just good to be up here. It's a tough race, but uh, I'm already looking forward to Road America. I can't wait. I knew that coming to VIR kind of played in my favor, you know. I've raced here more recently than a lot of these guys, and I've always been really strong here. It's just a track that suits my style pretty well. And after round three of Moto America 2015 season, here's how your points lay. In Superbike, Cam Bobier sits on top with Josh Hayes behind him in second. Both have three wins to their name this season, and Superbike rookie Jake Lewis in third. In Superstock 1000, Jake Gagne, Taylor Knapp, Tyler O'Hara. In Super Sport, J.D. Beach sits one point ahead of his teammate Garrett Gerloff, with Josh Heron close behind in third. In the Bizzazz Superstock 600, it's Richie Escalante in first, followed by Joe Roberts and Travis Wyman. Up next on the schedule is four miles of fun at Road America May 29th through 31st. Get more information and buy your tickets at MotoAmerica.com. But tonight, we have a packed show for you. Owner of SV Racing Parts and the sole importer and distributor of the KO 125 Mini GP bike, Blair Layton, three-time World Superbike World Champion and the newest member of the AMA Pro Flat Track scene, Troy Bayless, and his teammate, Johnny Lewis, joins us in studio tonight. But before we get our show rolling, let's thank our sponsors. For the Motorcycle Technology Center, visit bikers-lab.com. For championship winning performance, choose Brembo. And before we get to our first guest, John Boucher has something new to show you in this week's Product Spotlight, brought to you by RST Leathers. In this week's Product Spotlight, we're starting to take a look at the American cargo line. Today, more specifically, it's the large roller. Now, this gear bag is huge. You're gonna be able to fit just about everything you have. Boots, pants, helmets. You can even fit a Danielle Teal in this You're bag. Bunny, can I go now? Yeah. Promise to be nice. Danielle, no more biting. This is American Cargo's large roller gear bag. This thing is enormous. It has a number of little functions and features that other bags just don't have these days. One of the ones I like the most is that, you know, sometimes you get an American Cargo line in with the team. You can put actually your number right here. They have these available to where you just have a Velcro number that can stick on right here on the Velcro. And that's not only on this bag, but it's also available on other bags throughout the whole entire American Cargo line. Another nice feature on this large roller is the spot that they have for goggles. So you can fit up to six goggles here, but you're not stuck with just a goggle space. This is actually removable and adjustable, um, so you can uh, have this area to fit other things. All right, so we're gonna flip this uh, large roller on its side, and as we mentioned earlier, you can fit a person in this thing. Look at that available cargo space. Now, this right here, this is a little, uh, something a little extra that, that comes with this that uh, I haven't seen in another bag. This is what they call a changing mat. So if you've ever uh, been sitting on the uh, back of your truck or maybe uh, on the step of your van uh, and you've put your foot down as you're trying to change and you've got rocks in the bottom of your sock or, or maybe it got a little bit wet, uh, American Cargo is including this in the bag um, where you can put your feet down on here instead of getting rocks on the bottom of your socks and put them in there. So that's a, a changing pad. Uh, that comes with it, has its own nice little uh, fold up compartment where that stores away. Uh, a number of pockets uh, to separate, you know, maybe your wet clothes from your dry clothes. Um, this, of course, is that area we talked about earlier where the six goggles can fit. There's a couple more pockets. Another really nice thing is, of course, that telescopic handle uh, that's going to come uh, in and out. It's going to allow you to get through the airport uh, fairly easily. And it's got uh, some nice, big, huge, once you kind of get everything in, and sometimes I know we pack these bags tight, you know, pretty tight. And so 
um, you know, you're gonna have these big buckles that are gonna help secure your items even more. But I mean, this is, as I mentioned earlier, you know, 8,000 cubic inches of space. Um, your customized number pad can go on top. We've got two big things, a lifetime warranty and the price point in this bag. You cannot go wrong with a gear bag this size when you can get it for around that $200 mark, which is amazing. I mean, we're looking forward to more things from the American Cargo line, and uh, we're happy to have it. We're glad it's here. And that's this week's Product Spotlight. And we'll be right back after this commercial break with our first guest, Blair Layton. That's a Bridgestone Ecopia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going oh. green and saving some green. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Evil Technology, 100% American-made precision parts and accessories at EvilTechnology.com. Woodcraft Technologies, making products for racers by racers at Woodcraft-CFM.com. And we're back, and we're here with the owner of SV Racing Parts, Blair Layton, to talk about why you should go Cayo. Welcome to the show, Blair. Hi, it's great to be here, Daniel. Great. So let's talk about it, Blair. Why should we go Cayo? It's a Mini GP 125. Why do you think that this should be all, the all new rage around motorcycles? You know, the beauty of Mini GP riding and racing is that Mini GP allows you to learn to ride a bike in a way that you just can't do it on a big bike. It lets, it lets, uh, the range of the audience really is kids coming out of that nine to 10 year old PW 50, 70 CC, no clutch. Uh, that kind of mini mini pocket bike racing can step onto a Kyle and carry right on and develop themselves into great riders, just like every rider that's in World Superbike and MotoGP today came out of Mini GP. It also allows an adult to get on that same bike, and so it allows parents and kids to have a relationship with the track that really is not matched anywhere. Right, and that's something we always try to talk about here at Next Moto Champion is that there isn't really any other sport where the dad goes out there, tunes the bike for his son or daughter, the daughter and son then go ride that bike, win a race, do well, or, you know, have a mechanical. But it is this bond between parent and child that you're trying to also sell with this mini bike. But let's talk about the the small bike. We don't do that here very often in the States, and we heard that from Peter Clifford um, with Rebel Rookies Cup, that that's one thing that we're missing here is that step, that step from the, the pocket bike to the big bike, and you think this is going to fill that gap, right? There's just no question. You take um, most kids by the time they're 10 or 11 years old can hop on this 125cc four-stroke based bike, learn to really ride the bike in exactly the same way that an adult would be riding a big bike. And in fact, I've got a number of AMA racers and riders, excuse me, here in the USA that are using this bike as training bike, not just to have lower costs and and skills, but but say that the bike makes them learn to be a better rider, and that's important. Well, so developmentally, all over the board, this bike is good for anybody, any age group, male, female, experienced, you know, novice, anybody. So give us some of the special features. We know it's a 125. We know it's kind of a race-ready prep bike. That's kind of how you're selling it. So give us some of the special features or specs on this bike that makes it really, uh, really desirable. Well, the price point is excellent. Uh, the base bike sells for $2,795. Uh, for five or $600, you can have the bike completely race ready for both an adult and a child to ride. Um, we've, we've got these bikes in locations like uh, uh, NJ Mini GP Park out on the East Coast where they're putting them in the rental pool and using them so that when kids and adults that want to learn a bike come out, they can both get on the same bike and ride it. So those are all great features. The, the bike's easy to repair, it's easy to ride, um, just, it's all around, it's, it's just great and it's, it's not intimidating, that's the beauty of it, it's not, not an intimidating machine for anyone to learn to ride. 
Right, now all that sounds great, like great selling points to me. We're gonna take a quick commercial, Blair, and we'll be right back to talk about how it's being received here in the States and by who when we get back from this commercial break. For safe and structured track days, it's N2 Track Days. Check out their schedule at n2td.org. TT Moto Gear, your source for premium products and service. And we're back with Blair Layton, owner of SV Racing Parts and also the sole importer and distributor of the Kayo 125. Blair, we were just talking about some of the you know guys, the AMA guys are honing their skills on this bike. Guys like Nikki Hayden, Jake Zemke, John Hopkins made the Mini GP bike their developmental tool uh, in their career. So let's talk about how this bike is being received here by guys like Josh Heron uh, and like you said, some of the other big uh, pro racers. Right. Um, on the West Coast, for example, we've got uh, a number of riders from Yamaha USA's team, Sebastian Ferreira, Andrew Lee, Joy Pascalero, um, a number of those guys are using that bike at a little track called Little 99 in Stockton, California, where they've got the bike available for people to come out and see. So I invite anyone to contact the uh, people at uh, Little 99, and they'll let you ride the bike, as a matter of fact. You can test it out, and that's always great. But... Sebastian Ferreira said to me, you know, that, that this bike forces you to learn to be a great rider. It makes you, it makes you, uh, it makes you sort of pay attention and it makes you really ride great. We've had the bike this past weekend for the second event at uh, New Jersey Mini GP Park, where it was very, very well received. And we had guys uh, emailing us saying, hey, you know, I'm not the greatest rider in the world, but my teacher who used to spank me regularly on her NSR 50s had to follow me around the track today when I was on my KO. And so that's great. And we've had discussions with people like Josh, and we really hope that we're going to have that bike in the Heron compound very soon here. We've got owners near that compound that have taken the bike down, but we want to have enough bikes there that we can actually create a series at the compound and grow those 125 race series across the USA. Right, and I think the best thing about this size bike is that the fun at any size really is is relative. It's all fun. It doesn't matter the speed. But this yeah. bike in particular allows you to to hone your skills at a slower speed. You're lower to the ground. So all of these things are better in the big picture for starting out low and mm -hmm. developing yourself, correct? That's no doubt about it. You know, you've got a bike that will go about 70 miles an hour top speed. So if you're on a shifter series karting track, which is typically where the bikes are used for these types of series, you know, you can get the bike wound up in fifth gear. You've got a few friends out there riding. You're going to feel like, you know, you're on your 1199 going down the straightaway on this baby. Awesome. So now how can people get more information about this bike? And if, if they have one, is there parts readily available for it. I know these are a lot of concerns that people have when they're getting these kind of niche specialty bikes. Right. Uh, I have a warehouse in Washington State. We're in Ferndale, Washington. We've got a number of the bikes in stock in the warehouse right now to ship, so we could satisfy any demand at all. There's no question about that. But we also stock all of the aftermarket parts and the OEM parts for the bikes. The beauty of the engine is the engine's based on the Yamaha TTR 125, or in some markets it's called the YBR 125 engine. So Fixing the engine is a zero issue. It's just no problem. And uh, we now have our demo bike, which our, your guest a few weeks ago, Misty Hurst, races and rides for me. That bike's four years old, and we're still riding the bike without any major repair on it whatsoever. The bike's durable. It's dependable. And uh, anyone can go to www.svracingparts.com. Contact me through the contact page. There's a Kyle page on the website. So contact me if you've got any interest, for sure. 
I'm sold, Blair. Now we're going to have a full spec page on this bike in the next issue of Next Moto Champion Magazine. We're a big fan of it. I mean, it's what we believe in. It's starting your kids young, getting them involved. And we think at a more responsible rate at that matter, this bike helps provide you that because you're not jumping from a smaller bike to a big bike. It's kind of letting you do the stepping stones the way you probably should be, the way um, we've heard in the past has worked out best for guys. So, Blair, is there anything else you want to tell people? Anything else you really want to hard sell uh, on this bike? <laughs> well, you know, I don't know that we want to hard sell anything, but I do want to say this. I think that we're all going to look back in four or five years from now and we're going to say, wow, this bike, you know, was the right bike at the right moment that really made mini GP racing in the USA come alive. Everyone I know that rides it, you know, initially, like so many things that come from foreign markets is the initial manufacturer, they poop, some people will poo poo the bike as, as not being the kind of quality we might expect in the USA. But I can tell you that we have refined this bike to the point now where it's a zero issue machine. It I is like great. That. I like that. I think everybody likes to hear that as well. No yep. issues, everybody. Go check out the KO125 Mini GP bike at svracingparts.com. And Blair, thank you so much for coming on the show and informing everybody of why they should go KO. Thanks, Danielle. It's great being here. Absolutely. We'll be right back after this commercial break. This segment was brought to you by GEICO, where 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. American Cargo, the next level in performance riding packs. For the most comfortable ride on two wheels, choose Saddleman. Today we're looking at Yamaha's 2008 FZ1. This is in Yamaha's sport touring lineup, but with just a quick few adjustments, you can make it a street fighter just like that. With this one, I actually bought it totaled. Uh, the whole front cowling, everything was smashed pretty bad. Headers were smashed in. So a quick trick to eBay and a few street fighter sites, we fixed it right up. Got the full Yoshimura setup on it. Power Commander 3 back in 2008. Got the Renthal handlebars. This is a straight motocross bar, and it really gives it a beefier look and a much better riding position, almost like a supermoto feel to it. Got a custom headlight that has an alien kind of front mask feature to it that the eyeballs have the headlights coming out. It's a really cool look for the custom. Let's have a listen to that Yoshi pipe. Inline 4,000cc motor, dual front brakes with four piston calipers. This thing's got plenty of power at the throttle and at the lever from get you to point A to point B in no time. I'm Ryan Yearwood. This is the 2008 Yamaha FZ1 for NMC's parking lot preview. For protective jeans that fit your lifestyle, it's bullet jeans. Protect your motorcycle from rust with the Z-Rust Cycle Bolt. Pick it up at ZRustProducts.com. And we're back, and we're so happy to have the three-time World Superbike Champion who's back on a Ducati this year to contend the five milers in AMA Pro Flat Track. Troy Bayless, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so good to be here. I'm having a great time so far. What are you doing? You look like you're having a great time, whatever you're doing. No, I've been hanging out with some of the young guns coming through in the American series, and uh, we've been riding the bicycles. I've been staying at David Lloyd's place, and now I'm on my way back up to uh, JD's place before we head to Springfield to do the miler. So we had uh, Johnny Lewis in and he's excited to be your teammate. So how, what is your feeling joining this team, joining the AMA pro flat track scene? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird situation. Like I, you know, of course I stopped racing quite a while ago, but I found myself base, back in the basic roots of racing, um, back getting dirty and having some fun. And basically what I'm at is like, Trying to, trying to improve on dirt track or flat track and trying to make this sport grow because I honestly believe that this is a sport that will make our best road races. 
Right. Now, um, your teammates with Johnny, he said that you're a great ambassador for this sport. I mean, do you take on that role intentionally or it's just because you, or you're so passionate about it? Um, I think there's a bit of both there. Like, um, you know, I've spent so many years with Ducati. I love the sport as well. Um, I still like to, I still, I'm pretty competitive and I like to go fast, but you know, of course I, I stopped racing seven years ago. So I don't think that I'm in my prime, but I still think I can do a good job, but um, what I'm here, I'm here to have a good time, but I'm also here to try and promote the whole sport. Now, let's talk about it. You said you retired seven years ago. I'd say you came out of retirement. You did those two rounds uh, earlier this year and had some success, I would say, but you said you're not doing that. You're going AMA Pro Flat Track and said, why? Yeah, it was, um, it was a weird situation. Um, when Davida got injured, like um, on the Monday of the week leading up to Phillip Island, it wasn't until Tuesday afternoon when I spoke to Parlo and I said, oh, there's a spare bike there and I'm already down there. Like, maybe I should just jump on the bike. And um, Ducati guys didn't want to do it because um, of the engine rule. But long story short, we, we worked it out. And uh, it was just, like, honestly, I really wanted to do it because I finished on top and, like, I just wanted to go and get on the bike again. My, my youngest boy, he can't remember when I raced, so I just thought, like I said, a lot of situations, it was good for him to come and sit in and watch me race again, even though I wasn't really at the top. But I, I loved it and had a great time. And uh, like I say, like we're here at the, we're doing dirt track or flat track, and uh, that's, that's where it's at for me. And we just want to make it all happen. Well, we know you cut your teeth in dirt. You're familiar with dirt and dirt tracking. But, I mean, how are you feeling going up against the top guys? I mean, they're, they're wily riders. They're crazy. They're squirrely. You know, they don't take clean lines. and They, you know, they bar bang and stuff. Are you ready for that again? Yeah, I mean that's that's how I roll. Like that's how I grew up, and I'm been that's what I've been doing for the last 25 years. Um, like I say, I'm probably not at the top of my game, but I've never been at the top of grain of my game doing like mile races. I've never done one. I rode one of the big bikes for the first time, the Lloyd Brothers Ducati uh, at Savannah, like a couple of days ago. And honestly, when I rolled in and seen the track, I just went, "Holy shit, that looks pretty fast." And uh, I, I was going pretty good by the afternoon. Johnny looked really good, and um, he, he's a great guy, and he's got a great family, and I think this is a good situation for him. For me, it's not really about, like, going out there and winning. Uh, it's about being here and, and trying to promote the sport and uh, get the Ducatis back on the track and make it bigger and better. That's, that's what it's all about. Well, it sounds like a perfect pairing for Ducati, obviously, to have Troy Bayless back on the bike, and obviously good for flat track. And we're going to talk about how this pairing came together when we get back from this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Hello. <laughs> this little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left and like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle. See how much you could save. EDR Performance, the premier motorcycle and performance racing center on the West Coast. That's EDRPerformance.com. CoreMoto Performance Brake Lines. Check them out at CoreMoto.com. And we're back with three-time world superbike champion turned AMA pro flat tracker Troy Bayless. Troy, we were just talking about you being back with the Ducati, this time in the flat track scene. How did you and the Lloyd brothers come together? Was it something they reached out to you? Did you reach out to them? Or how did that work out? Wow, it's a long story. Um, I was speaking with um, Steve McLaughlin uh, about coming and doing one race at Sacramento, and I thought, like, a one race turning up at Sacramento doesn't sound very good. Uh, and then they all spun around, and we started hooking up with the people, and I spoke with um, David and Mike from Lloyd Brothers Motorsports, and uh, through a little bit of help through Ducati North America and some other people who really helped us out, um, it's, it's turned out to make this happen. And like I say, it's all about like getting these guys back on track, and uh, I'm I'm keen to try and do the best job that I can. But you know, I'm a Ducati person. That's all there is to it. And I want to try and I think we've got so many like Ducati people in America, like all the Ducati owners clubs. If we get some of these guys to the track, they're going to be hooked, and they're going to want to come and see more. 
Right. Now, there is a great following for bikes like Ducati's. I mean, it's a very niche culture, uh, so I'm sure you'll see the fan turn out at the tracks. But is this a long-term thing for you, Troy, or is this something you want to come kind of see and conquer this year and, and call it a day? Or do you see a long-term project for you here in the States? Yeah, well, like I said, like I stopped seven years ago and I go through my ups and downs and like I'm, I'm reasonably fit. Like I go OK for like 46, but that's not the wrong end. That's not the right end of the scale to be doing this. Um, we'll give it these races and we'll see how we go. And we see. I just want to be part of it. So if I'm not riding, I'm going to be part of the team and like uh, maybe bring some hot shot Aussie over here, some young guy. And, but, you know, I'd, I'd like to try and keep on going, but we'll see how it all pans out. Now, how's flat track over there? Is there a scene for it? Oh, it's it's growing over there. Like road racing's gone through a hard time in Australia, and um, it's funny because like I've done so much road racing, I don't really care for it so much anymore. I, I'm like in my mind at the moment, I just care about flat track for some silly reason, uh, and it's not silly because, like I said, this is where all if you can like ride a flat track bike at like at the limit, you're going to be a good road racer anyway, and it's too expensive to be doing like. Australia hasn't got the the money behind it to be like racing full on super bikes. So, you know, we need something a little bit cheaper where everyone can be competitive and have a great time. Right. We believe that as well over here at Next Moto Champions. Roy. We just wanted to get you on and talk about it. We know it's going to bring some great publicity to the sport, which is much needed at this point in the States uh, in flat track and road racing for that matter. I think you just being here and hanging out with some of the best road racers uh, and flat track guys that we have is great for everybody. So thanks so much for coming on to the show. Realistically, before we let you go, what are your expectations this weekend at the mile? Yeah, I'll settle for a first. <laughs> Of course you will. Who wouldn't? If you're not first, you're last. <laughs> really? I mean, you think you're going to stack up pretty good? I mean, that's going to like, up, you know, like a lot of people give me a hard time about that, but I, I want to be competitive. I didn't, I didn't come here to, to roll around. Um, but like I said, I'm here to promote the sport. And I, like I say, it's death before dishonor. I'm going to give it a good shot. There you go. And that's all we uh, can hope for from you. We know good things will come either way, Troy. We'll let you get on the road up to the Gillums and have some fun up there with uh, JD and the Gillum family before getting on to the Springfield Mile. But thanks so much for coming on the show, Troy. Thank you. I'd love to talk to you guys and uh, take care. We'll talk again soon, Troy. Keep us updated. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Walla Valley Raceway, 17 corners to challenge even the most experienced rider. Go race, CVR.com. SVRacingParts.com, the exclusive importer and distributor of the KO Mini GP MR125 race bike. That's SVRacingParts.com. Tire warmers, bike stands, undersuits, you can find all of them at MotoDRacing.com. Hey everyone, Johnny Lewis here. Welcome to my home. It's uh, the bedroom, TV, entertainment. We travel the country doing uh, racing, racing motorcycles, doing schools. So this is uh, a La Costa. Got the living room, playroom, the little guy, the little office in the back, and then a full kitchen. Hey guys, we got a show to do. That's right, everybody. We're here with the number 10, Johnny Lewis. He's a multiple AMA national champion, and he's here visiting us in Nashville. Johnny, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. So let's talk about what we just saw, your mobile home yeah. on wheels, right? Yep. I mean, how is it traveling the country with your family like that? It's been amazing. We left uh, you know, our, our place in Pennsylvania where I grew up. My wife's actually from Canada, so she wasn't really home to her yet. And uh, we sold the house, hit the road, and um, you know, went to which kind of traveled down to Florida right away. I just went 
from the cold right to the warmest spot we could go. And uh, for a month, I just did. I just went to motocross, to motocross track, to motocross track. Went riding a bunch. Um, you know, little guy was starting to walk and do different things. So I've been with him the whole you know step of you know every day, just watching him grow. And that's to me what I wanted out of the whole thing. I didn't really plan to go racing. You know, I didn't know what I was doing race, going to do racing, and uh, just did it just for a life change for us. And it's worked out great. You know, uh, even for my racing, it's just it put me in a, a good spot to be able to ride all the time. Uh, train, starting to do riding schools, and then, you know, for me also just, um, you know, having the flexibility of time where <clears throat> back home I was working a bunch, doing a real, you know, real job, not having fun riding Which motorcycles. Was? Uh, actually working at a motorcycle shop, I was helping a buddy manage a KTM shop, doing parts and uh, sales license and all that kind of stuff. So I was doing a little bit, but I was working too much and uh, just didn't get enough time with him. And now it's, hey, I can get in, I can get in a run, get in a couple motos, Get in a walk with him, playing in the mud, getting dirty, finding you know cool father stuff to do with my son. Right. Well, it sounds like you're living uh, any motorcycle racer's dream, for that matter, getting to travel around with your family yep. and making it your job. And yep. it is very much your job at this point. Like you said, you have your training, school. Yep. You do all sorts of things to make this your way of life. So talk about that as a business for you, how that's going. Yeah, it's it's. I was doing another school, but it was uh, it was only multiple times a year, and then I just wanted to do stuff where I can kind of maybe build a program around a certain kid. You know, maybe a kid lives in a certain area, um, you know, doesn't have a gym he can go to or doesn't have a racetrack he can go to, but has a little track at his house or whatever. So it's it's been neat. Where I've been able to do schools at this one track in Florida, but like last week I did a school in uh, South Carolina, you know, rated right the kids, one kid's track and uh, be able to build a program, a training program, running on the roads that he lives on and kind of putting a program together for him that will work. because. You know, you can go somewhere and have all the all the necessities to really train, you know, at a school and, you know, have a gym and all that stuff. But if you don't have it at home and you can't go home and apply it, then it kind of makes stuff. So I've been doing that and it's working out great. I'm having fun and getting to meet a lot of people and traveling. And, uh, um, you know, this summer I'm, I'm getting pretty heavily into doing a, I'm doing a three day boot camp with 10 kids in, in uh, Illinois and kind of doing the same thing and um, just having fun with it. I just love riding motorcycles. You know, if I can teach kids to ride motorcycles or adults or, you know, women, older men, you know, whoever it is, um, you know, if I can teach them and have fun and, you know, I don't have to make a million bucks, but it's paying the bills and we can, we can travel and just meet tons of people and it's been amazing. Well, you said you're going to be really busy this summer with that, but also with the new team you're on, yep. the Lloyd Brothers Racing Team, uh, alongside Troy Bayless, who's <laughs> also on the show today. Yep. Um, talk about that. I mean, you're going to be swamped this, this summer with a full-time deal. Yeah, it's, it's neat, you know. Uh, Got to hang out with Troy this last weekend and got some riding and got to kind of give him some pointers. It's kind of giving a world champion some pointers. I was kind of sitting back, and but he's like, he wants them, you know, because he's he's all new to this. But I'm like, I'm just trying to, I'm telling Troy Bellis how to do something. You know, sh it shouldn't be that way, but it's neat. And, uh, you know, the team is going to be great. You know, the bikes are amazing. Uh, Ducati came on board, a guy, Jim Dillard, a uh, vintage motorcycle a collector. And, um, it just neat. The whole atmosphere we had, all of everybody kind of was supporting the team either at the test or uh, two nights ago, um, actually at a dinner at Dave Lloyd's house. So <clears throat> everybody has been involved, and it's been a, kind of a crammed. You know, it was like, okay, let's go race in you know February, and it's like, okay, now we got to build bikes, and we have you know Dave Lloyd and Michael Lloyd put four bikes together for us, so we have two each. You know, so when we get there, we're gonna have it's it's a it's a good looking program. The bikes are amazing looking. They uh they have like a the scrambler, the new Ducati scrambler theme, which is a great bike. Yeah. yeah so the whole theme and the the social networking part of it, it's it's the whole involvement is just it's, you know, there's, flat track racing is definitely picking up, and it's it's neat to be finally at that point where it's picking up and and being uh I think one of the main reasons you know industry sponsor and everybody doing it. Well, uh, and what's the feeling knowing that Troy is basically Mr. Ducati? You know, yeah. he's got such a following with Ducati yeah. fans and, and his legacy. It's like yeah. a dream team for you. And so what's the feeling there? Is there pressure? Are you excited to be No, involved? I mean, it's, it. you know, I, I joke, you know, I, I kind of say, hey, I'm, I'm piggybacking on you because it is, it is. you know, the whole program kind of came together with him and then Dave and all the other guys kind of added me to it because it's because they know, hey, John's kind of had some bad luck with some bikes and stuff. Let's put him on a good bike and see what we can do. And, you know, they know I am a teacher and, you know, maybe I can help Troy along the way, these five races and kind of build a really successful season. I think that's what it's going to be. So for me, it's, I'm just excited. You know, I know Ducati will post Troy 
And it's like, I'm just sitting back, I'm like, it's okay. It's, right. it's perfect, you know, because it's, it's helping the team, it's helping the sport. And Troy's a huge ambassador for the sport. And it's, it's really nice to see and finally get to meet him and then see how, how much he really loves flat track and wants to see the growth of it. So it's Well, it neat. sounds like a great opportunity for you and a perfect pairing uh, for the both of you. Yeah. We're gonna come back and talk a little bit more with Johnny Lewis about uh, his new team, the Lloyd Brothers Racing Team, when we get back from this commercial break. American Cargo, the next level in performance riding packs. For the most comfortable ride on two wheels, choose Saddleman. And we're back, we're here with the number 10, Johnny Lewis. Johnny, we were just getting into the fact that you're really happy about this pairing between you yeah. and Troy and the Ducatis. A lot of momentum there, a lot yeah. of energy, and you said 110% effort, elaborate. Yeah, it's just, you know, the, you know, Dave didn't want to go race unless the bikes were good, the budget was there. Uh, we are doing selective races. Uh, Troy's doing the five miles, and then I'm also doing uh, Lima, um, Charlotte, and then also, you know, we're including X Games as well. So, we're, you know, we're kind of, I'm doing a couple extra races, but Troy's doing the miles, but thankfully with Troy, getting out of the environment and all the other sponsors, Vicki Smith from uh, Ducati.net, she was really a big effort of kind of getting everybody together, let's do it, you know, in a timely fashion. I mean, they're still finishing up pit shirts and all that stuff, so it's, um, it's a great effort. And <clears throat> the bikes, I rode it, and it's, you know, you can buy the picture above, you know, you can see I was comfortable on it, you know, the front wheels off the ground, you know, the bike was hooked up, and immediately you know i felt comfortable and dave was really uh dave lloyd and his brother michael everybody was really excited to see how comfortable it was on the bike and you know they could tell and i could feel it so i'm i'm excited to head to head to springfield after i leave uh franklinville right and we'll get we'll get to uh springfield next but i want to talk about the x games before we get too far away from it that's so exciting for the sport of flat yeah. track i mean how exciting to be involved in that yeah it's neat you know like i i was involved with supermoto in the past and uh was at a lot of X Games, and then I finally was invited to 2008. We did X Games in uh, San Diego. It was a moto only, so it was all motorcycles. Uh, X Games, which was a neat event. It was still like a, it was a, it wasn't the big X Games, but it was a part of it. And same, you know, we were treated like royalty, you know, royalty, and uh, it was neat. So for the sport now, you know, to just get the exposure, be on live TV, uh, you know, pumped up like it is. You know, their social media media is huge and like they're posting pictures and it's just getting thousands and thousands of likes and it's you know now I'm getting you know hundreds of likes each week just because like you know the way I'm tagging and doing stuff so you know the whole social networking of it this the sports you know the TV involved it's it's it is it's growing the sport back to what it was and I think it, it could get you know, really good financially and all that kind of stuff I was well. going to say, is this what Flat Track needs? We know that you <clears throat> were in it in the past, you've dabbled around there, you've done some yeah. promoters as well, like you said, um, but you're like, this is kind of where it needs to be for me to get back involved yeah, the timing's personally. Good. So, yeah, so the timing's good. Tell us about that. You know, the, um, you know, there's a lot of manufacturers getting involved, not just Harley Davidson with their contingency. It's, you know, Kawasaki has contingency, Yamaha has contingency, Honda has a contingency for the 450s. Um, you know, there's a lot of that going on, but then also, you know, uh, you know, banks are, you know, there's a bank sponsorship of this series and there's different bonuses for the, for us from EMA. So it's like, you know, there, you can actually now, you know, be a top 10 guy versus just the top three guy making money. Now it's like top 10, you know, they're project, you know, projecting like, you know, next year it could be top 15 if you're really in the points, you know, you could really almost make a living at doing this. And, you know, I've been pretty good at making a living, kind of selecting, doing stuff that I, you know, could make, you know, have some good results, get some good exposure. But yeah, I, I dabble it around, but now it's like, I'm focused, you know, flat tracker. It's, uh, um, timing's good. And I think with this bike and the team behind it, I think we can go out and, you know, lead some races and hopefully cross the finish line first and get the big uh, celebration. There you go. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about your goals and expectations for this weekend's Springfield Mile that's coming yep. up after we get back from this commercial break. Don't go anywhere. Tire warmers, bike stands, undersuits, 
You can find all of them at MotoDRacing.com. SVRacingParts.com, the exclusive importer and distributor of the KO Mini GP MR125 race bike. That's SVRacingParts.com. All right, and we're back with Johnny Lewis. Johnny, you're on your way up. You stopped yep. here so graciously in Nashville <laughs> to uh, say hello, and you're on your way to Springfield, yes. which is one of the biggest races uh, on the schedule. It always right. is. Fan turnout is great. So what are your feelings? Uh, you know, prior to some of the bikes I rode before, I actually led a lot of laps at Springfield. Never never won the race, never podium, but it was. I led a lot of laps and learned a lot, and I feel like as a rider, I've really mentally, physically, everything has kind of evolved over those years that had some bad luck. And now coming into it, I, I think we have the program to really uh, do some damage and, you know, not just get myself in the main event and have a good result, but also kind of getting Troy in there and getting us this first uh, 25 laps. So, you know, it will be pretty amazing if we do both, you know, we get that in, both bikes in there and have that, you know, happen for us, you know, Ducati and everybody involved in a kind of a short effort program as far as getting it all together, jamming everything Are you in. ready? I'm ready. I've been, uh, I've been training a bunch, obviously. On the road has been great for me. I've been uh, bicycle, you know, I bicycled for a little bit when my buddies were down in Florida, and then uh, <clears throat> yeah, I run a lot, so it's been good. So I'm I'm excited physically, mentally. I know the bike's good, so and the leathers, you know, uh, we got Alpine Star matching suits, you know, with the uh, Scranton Burler um, Ducati on it and stuff. So it's gonna we're gonna look good but also go fast. <laughs> right, well, looking good is half the battle. So there's a lot of subplots going on, Johnny, like um, Cool Beth and Shoemaker and Henry Wiles and all these different yep. guys that are gonna be major contenders yep. in this race. I mean, is this the one that you go out and really wanna duke it out with these guys? Yeah, I mean, everybody's, you know, all these guys are kind of new teams or, you know, a little bit more effort, you know, a little bit more support. And, um, you know, Springfield's one of the races that there's two of them. So it's like, oh, if you don't win the first one, you can always win the second one. But it's a good way to start the season off. Um, you know, I've always had some pretty good momentum. You know, 2012, I won Daytona. Um, you know, I had some pretty good momentum, sitting pretty good in points, came in. And now uh, the way they send you out in practice is based off your points, you know, from each race, you know, prior. So you kind of get out there and, you know, if you get out in the lead group and you get in practice and you get your times going and, and everybody getting faster and faster and the track's getting faster and you, that momentum starts coming, you, you start feeling it and then, uh, you know, that main event comes around, you know, if you make the dash, you're, you're pretty pumped and, uh, you know, it comes the 25 lap main event, it's, it's an exciting time to be out on the track, the experience, and then, uh, you know, just the bike and everything is, it's going to be good, so I'm, I'm really excited for it. Well, and you said it's one of those tracks that kind of changes and develops as the yep. weekend goes by, and you have a little bit more respect for it yep. as a result, so what do you mean by that? Yeah, the track, you know, it can start off where it's, it's got tons of traction, kind of goes away and then comes back by the main event, but... You know, David Lloyd and his brother Michael have a lot of experience there. I have a good amount of experience. I've made a lot of mains, but like I said, I had some bad luck with bikes, but it's a chess game. You know, you're back and forth. You know, you can have the best bike, but the way the draft works and everything, it's just, you know, you kind of let guy go. You know, it's like you don't race hard. You know, you're not 100%. You're like, you know, 90% most of the race. And then it's just figuring out where your bike's the best. And then coming off that last corner, if you're, got to draft him or if you just say, hey, I'm going to try to check out and pull the thing like Kenny Colbert did last year at the end of the year. He just rode around the outside of Smith going into uh, three and got a big enough gap off of four <clears throat> that he, you know, he, Smith just got him, you know, almost got him at the line, but it's, I mean, every race is within hundreds of seconds to finish. So it's, it's more of a mental game. And, you know, I've been doing my, my homework on that. And then I think I'm, Pretty mentally You're strong. ready. Yeah. Ready. You look ready. Well, we know Springfield's one of those nostalgic races. Everybody looks forward to it each year. So we wish you the best of luck. Thanks. It sounds like this is a great partnership with you, Troy, Ducati, yeah. and Lloyd Brothers, of course. And Johnny, we just want to wish you the best of luck. We'll be following you uh, throughout your season, so keep Thanks. us updated, of course. Follow him on Instagram, Facebook. He's posting constantly between yeah, you, your wife, the family, and the dogs, course, you know, yep. everything we do. It's great. It's family on the road, and it's, it's a great, a, a lot of different stuff, actually, that you don't see from a lot yeah. of the racers. So it's really nice. Also, they can find more information about your training programs at trainingby10.com. Yep. And this is Johnny Lewis, number 10, everybody. Thanks so much, Johnny, for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. We'll fun. be right back after this commercial. This is Cole. Clearly, Cole has a bad attitude and a long torso. For a better attitude, Cole is going to need professional psychological help. For his long torso, professional psychological help is already here. Build Brand Clothing Shirts specifically feature two extra inches of length, a tubular fit, and the world's most comfortable 30 singles cotton fabric. Solve a problem in your life. 
Buy a shirt from BuiltClothing.com and see why the details and fit and quality make our shirts superior. All right, and before we wrap up the show, I want to give a big, huge, happy sixth birthday to my son, Max. He's one of the biggest race fans you'll ever meet. He's grown up at the track and is known by first name by some of the best racers in the world. Happy birthday, Max. Yeah, happy birthday, Max. And thanks to all of our guests tonight, Blair Layton, Troy Bayless, and Johnny Lewis. And don't forget, Moto America Round 3 from VIR is going to air on Sunday, May 24th at 4 p.m. Eastern on CBS Sports Network with a replay later that day at 9 p.m. and a second replay on Tuesday, May 26th at 10 a.m. Eastern. And of course, on Motor Trend On Demand. And for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Welcome to the Next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. <laughs> Welcome to the Next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. If you missed last week's episode, Brandon Cretu and Patricia Fernandez. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs>